Is it better now? Yeah. My name is Kumar. Uh, the company is called Sutherland. Uh, this presentation which I'm using is not something that I, was, I had prepared for uh, this discussion today. I was in Saudi Arabia uh, before coming here and uh, just happened to uh, talk to uh, Manju and uh, heard about this, uh, uh, you know, initiative and, 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 and all of you getting together here. And uh, I was to come to Bangalore, so I said, let me take the opportunity of coming and, uh, you know, uh, meeting all, everybody and, uh, you know, telling you about what we do. Uh, as a company, uh, we are uh, what I call a billion-dollar corporation, you know, you know five 6,000 crores uh, revenues. Uh, we employ about 45,000-plus people in the world, all in the uh, business process management, IT, and enabled services. Uh, in about 15, 16 countries. So we grew this company from uh, 2002 uh, to where it is today. And of course, we came in operations in India started in 2002. We bought uh, something over about 16,000 people that we employ in India also, in the IT enabled services. Uh, in, in the, in, and I happen to be uh, also uh, one of the you know, senior leaders in the company uh, as the chief of operations and also uh, all of our global growth and expansion in, in working out our strategy for growth across the world. Uh, over the last uh, about 12 years, uh, when we embarked on this, uh, on, on this growth, uh, we defined for ourselves who we want to be as a company. And, and of course, you know, that's all translated into vision and mission, as you know. But at the end of the day, we said, we want to work in countries where we can make an impact, we want to understand what are the priorities of the country, uh, what are the priorities of the community, and how do we align the country, the community, the clients, and the company as all as aligned in one one way one way of doing things and getting together uh, with a common objective. So, as a company, we went to different countries, of course, India included, and looked at inclusive growth and look at how do we make a difference to the people that we employ in terms of creating possibilities for them from a growth perspective. Uh, so, so because our business is all about people. We don't have any machinery or factory, as you know. And that is the background of, therefore, country, community, company, and the client as an approach to building business and making a difference. So this is... Uh, uh, is, is I just want to talk about some examples of what we did. And now we are looking at what more can we do on the same track as we speak in terms of doing things impactfully and, and therefore looking at uh, our responsibilities towards society and what we can therefore do to create more possibilities for the young people. Uh, well, I just probably spoke about some of these things in terms of, therefore, the questions we ask ourselves about how do we deliver value, how do we make an impact, how do we build a sustainable model, and how do we make a difference to the lives we touch. So these are the questions we ask when we align ourselves, therefore, uh, you know, what we do uh, to the country, to the community, to the client and the company. And I just talked about who we are as a company. We are a people, process, technology company, you know, and, and, and the company is called Sutherland. So, yes, we have about 50,000 people in over the 14 years now, expanded into over 18 countries and all of that. So, this may not be so important, but just as a background. And then, uh, so what did we do? We went to a country called Philippines in 2006. I went and asked the president of the country, what is your priority what, uh, what do you want to do? Uh, what is the difference we can make for your country in terms of your objectives? And uh, so she told me that, listen, we are a country of islands. We got thousand islands. Everybody comes to only one place called Manila or goes to a place called Cebu. We want to create jobs in the islands. So we worked with the government and picked six provinces where there's no infrastructure in terms of technology, connectivity. There was no physical buildings. And uh, we wanted, of course, the alignment of the governors, the mayors, the universities in terms of building a roadmap of creating employment. 
So over the last, you know, six years or so, uh, we started with 414 people and ended up, you know, now about 17,000 people in the Philippines. And 70% of them work in the provinces where we invested in people, uh, we invested in young people in the universities, we worked with the universities in, you know, including our training into their curriculum, and we invested in creating jobs for those people, and then worked, you know, who worked with us. And in some of those cities, we created jobs with from 100 people to 3, 4,000 people. Townships have come around us, you know, shopping malls have started coming, a uh, lot more prosperity and well-being, you know, as a result of what we're doing in those, you know, in those provinces. And of course, we got all the awards and everything else for being, uh, you know, uh, you know, in the model that we did as the outstanding employer, uh, you know, by the president of the country uh, many, many years in a row. This is one of the examples I just want to talk about how we do and how we make a difference. Uh, I went to Jamaica about two years ago and uh, met the Prime Minister of Jamaica and I asked her, <coughs> what is your priority? What is your real challenge? She said, I'm, I'm a country of four million people and uh, 30, 40 percent of the people, young people do not have the money to go to college. And therefore, we want to do something in the way that we can create opportunity for them to study and, of course, then get employed. So we worked with the University of West Indies uh, in Jamaica, where we went around there and mapped out the first thousand students who really need money to support education. And then after assessing their skill and will, we put a training program in place in terms of business analytics, supply chain and logistics management, uh, technology support and all of that, and by, you know, segregated them into different groups, put the training in place. We got the stakeholder alignment with some university professors. We used them as our trainers. And over a period of six, eight months, we trained the first, I would say, 300 uh, batch of people uh, who are studying there. And then, of course, now it is about 1,800 people that we've employed right now. So we set up a delivery center inside the university itself. And we do not pay the students the money. We actually pay the university. And we agree with the university that we are going to pay them for three years for these people to study. And in return, uh, the university allows them to work for anything between 12 to 15 to 18 hours, under 20 hours every week for us. And by by, by working for us, they pay back the money we pay them for the education. And in the meanwhile, we are creating them as the next level of talent for uh, the clients that we have for these kind of businesses in the future. And these clients are, of course, Microsoft and Amazon and all of that, because we work with 1,400 companies you know, in the area of uh, e-commerce and uh, uh, technology and all of that. And, and, and of course, banking and financial services and insurance. So we're working on uh, creating licensed underwriters, you know, so the whole program for uh, underwriting, uh, mortgage uh, training for mortgage processing uh, is, is one of the things, for example. So today we've got 1,800 people, and now, and but last week I spoke to the Prime Minister of the country and said, hey, you know what, uh, what are the next thing we should be doing there? She said, we want you to build more of this, so we're doing that. In the meanwhile, totally different from this, I just found out, because I went to Jamaica, I found out that it's a country like Kerala. It's very tropical and you can actually grow Ayurveda. So I spoke to the Chief Minister of Kerala right now to say, how do we create a collaboration between Jamaica and Kerala and take Ayurveda to Jamaica? And look at you know integrating agriculture, cultivation of herbal medicines, plants, and you know creating jobs for the uneducated people of Jamaica and training them. And of course, over the next two, three, four years, how do you create you know, Ayurveda as a medical tourism opportunity for the American marketplace. I invited the Prime Minister of Jamaica to come to India to create an MOU because now the government of India has got an Ayurveda as one of the key areas of priorities. That's not for me to make any money personally, frankly, all of these things, because this is also about making that difference and uh, you know, for us taking Ayurveda offshore and, of course, for uh, Jamaica to create more possibilities for the people. So these are some of the examples. Of course, we just went to uh, you know, another place uh, 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 I was just uh, there in the Middle East, uh, in UAE, and then the, the, the government told us they have a, you know, a challenge because the young people, the women, uh, do not have jobs and they don't go to work. 
and the same problem in Saudi Arabia and of course in, uh, you know, in, 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 in UAE and, and some other countries. So we said, okay, let's develop a program for creating jobs for women who are disadvantaged, who are divorced, who, you know, otherwise have social, you know, challenges. And we worked with the banks, in one of the banks that you know, we deal with called the Abu Dhabi Commercial Bank, and created 250 jobs for the women to work from home in UAE now. And they come to one place every, every week to collaborate, get trained, go back home. And then we got this uh, bank to sign up with us. And as we speak right now, I was in Saudi Arabia, and we're just looking at doing the same thing with uh, healthcare and looking uh, at some of the other areas, including banking, and creating jobs for the women who need the jobs and how they can work from home. So we have the technology for that, and we are already doing that out of you know, in the U.S. Uh, for about two, three thousand people. So back again, therefore, this is of course Saudi Arabia. So that's why you saw this presentation. Um, we are looking at various things that we can do impactfully and enroll more people like yourself in that possibility as we keep doing this. And uh, this morning I was having a meeting about some of the initiatives that we're looking at doing something in the northeast of India uh, for uh, you know training, uh, job creation. Uh, look at that area, part of the world also probably needs to join, you know, more, more help at this point in time. So open for any kind of uh, opportunities, uh, you know, entrepreneurial ideas and people need support. Yes, we are also a company of more than 1,000 crores in India and we also need to spend our uh, 2% uh, also on the other hand. And uh, so, so some of those things so, uh, we're looking at. So any questions you have, thank you so much for your time. And this is not a planned uh, you know, discussion that I'm having today with you. Anybody has any questions? context in that context yeah. the so 20 you know, hours and sufficiency so, yeah so actually you know the, the interesting thing is I like I told you about the alignment of the country community and the client and the company so it is difficult for me to get the client to engage in that first but now the clients are coming and said you're making a difference you want to work with you in the way you're making a difference so even if it's not paying fully how much are you spending you know we prepared to work with you on that right so in the meanwhile so I think in the overall sense of business, because I have got 18 countries, you know, 14 countries have more than 2,000, 3,000 people in every country. We make, it makes business sense for us. But we over invest in some other places where there's more disadvantage that we need to invest. So this is a good question, by the way. So it's not paying us back now. In the meanwhile, we are actually rec recruiting full time about 130 people who are just graduating from the lots that we already employed a year and a half ago, and that's a good investment because we don't have to train them. Uh, Mr. Kumar, first and foremost, thank you very much for stopping by and uh, taking time out to speak to us. Your examples of Jamaica, Philippines, and UAE, very impressive indeed. Uh, I, I'm from Scient. My name is Sanjay. I, I, I'm from the Scient family. And uh, to Kale's uh, point, we spent 2% towards CSR PPT, just, just as a reference. Now, uh, Sir, what would your advice be? We do a lot of stuff. We do. Uh, we have adopted schools. Uh, we do train the teachers. We do a lot of stuff among ourselves as well. Now, the the examples which you gave from uh, Philippines and also Jamaica was you you set up an ecosystem there uh, from your process tools and technology perspective, which helped spread uh, uh, an environment for people, which became a job opportunity for them. Now, in an Indian context, what would your recommendations be besides what I told you about what we already do, sir? Okay. So, you know, it's a, it's a question probably we'll need to, you know, discuss a little bit in the sense it's a question of what are the ecosystems which you're more familiar with in terms of geography or where you want to operate and also what are the businesses where people can see more possibilities and you can actually create more possibilities for them if they are in the same ecosystem or adjust into what you do. So depending upon your lines of businesses, like I was talking about, in fact, we just uh, the other day also talked about healthcare, for example, right? There's, there's a lot more of opportunities uh, today. I was just discussing, in fact, with my daughter who just uh, you know finished her uh, uh, MBA in banking and finance in Australia to come and create something here for creating jobs for you know people in part time. 
because a lot of people who are educated who are retiring, a lot of mo mothers who cannot work, you know, who are at home in India also, uh, you know, who, who want to only work part time, right? Who needs and who can actually help? One of the areas, for example, by the way, I just talked to somebody else. They're looking for tutors, you know, and, and you don't have enough people who can teach. Now we have a technology, for example, you know, in terms of uh, what we do because of our business, you know, in, in the IT enabled services where. People can log in, like your WebEx or whatever it is, and then do online tuition, right? So what I'm trying to say here is, it all depends. Healthcare requires the biggest, uh, biggest opportunity today is healthcare. In India, healthcare is growing so much. But the whole thing around what I call patient experience management, not just the hospital, because going to a hospital is one part of the whole, you know, life cycle of what you do in healthcare. There's so much opportunity for supporting the whole ecosystem of healthcare, and that can be done using technology by a whole bunch of people in their entire value chain from different places. And we can train them for that, for example. That is very needed because a lot of people end up in hospital because we are not taking care of their wellness. So proactively supporting the people who need, and that also is done remotely, and these are all people who cannot even go to hospitals because they are very far away in different parts of India. They're talking of broadband, connectivity, telemedicine, and all of that. From an ecosystem point of view, this becomes one sector where you can actually do the, make a big impact and also make it you know, financially rewarding for everybody. Right, so, so your recommendation would be more towards the adjacencies of who you are, what you do, and? Absolutely. Sure. And I, in fact, frankly, uh, I was just telling one of our you know, friends who just met me earlier you know, at coffee, just by chance, say that personally, I've done this for a long time, and I say, you know what? There, times, like, there comes a time when you want to think about what you want to do beyond what you do, and it's not for money or business, you know, in terms of what you can do to make a difference. And I'll be happy to, you know, help those causes, work with some of them in terms of, you know, in projects which are really truly impactful and also which can actually scale. Very inspiring, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Kwan. Uh, uh, you, you said you got some uh, plans for the Northeast. Uh, have you formulated those plans? And uh, why I'm asking is because I have seen most of Northeastern states, or the, the eight uh, states, and it's pretty bad as compared to the rest of India. I'll just tell you quickly. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, for the rest of the people also. Uh, see, this is exactly like I said, the country community thing. What exactly are the challenges? Today morning I was speaking with I don't want to name, one of the leading CEOs of uh, the top 10 real estate companies in India, uh, who is making a, 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 you know, a smart city in Calcutta. You know, they got about 400 acres. What I was telling them is, I want to create a, you know, training hubs in different parts of Northeast and, and train people you know, who really need jobs, right? And get them over to come to Calcutta and when they create the smart city, I said create one place where you can actually employ 1,000 people, but create dormitories for them when they come because they need to come back after that. So the whole idea was between the government of India's initiative, for example, for doing Northeast and creating possibilities for people and the challenges that those people places have from a security and access and all of that point of view, how do you at least get, get the traction and get started you know, by training the people in those places where they are in the first place, and getting them out to a safer place for them to come and work in the future. For example, this was one of the things I was just talking to somebody about this morning. So I mean, the various things that one has got to look at, there are challenges. Every place there is challenges. Like I was just talking about the Philippines, 70% uh, of our people work in the provinces, where there's no connectivity. You know, there is no flight, only one flight that goes to, you know, two hours away, some other place, and one, once in two days. But now they've got flights, uh, three flights every day, and, uh, and we did make an impact, and the governor of that place worked with us, and that place is, you know, it's, it changed completely. Uh, but we, sp we spent the money for 43 kilometers of, you know, we were putting the fiber. So the places I was talking about in Northeast, you know, without ma naming the locations, I was actually talking about the government of India, say what are their initiatives and priorities they're putting, and wh how they're going to support this whole thing around Northeast, and then talking with the real estate people about how they can create the right infrastructure, so it's a whole ecosystem of lot many things have to come into play, right? Including security. And we, in fact, I said I want to have a meeting in February with the chief of army, uh, who's looking at and the the uh, 
Army commander. Army commander and also another border as a force, border security force. Right. I was actually asking for a meeting, NASCOM, to arrange my meetings with those people to understand exactly the whole ecosystem around security and all of that. If you want to do that, so it's 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 really a process. You know, it takes time. Incidentally, I'm a lieutenant colonel retired. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Good. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. One second. Uh, we'll request Hebbar to kindly give him a token of appreciation. Hello. Good evening. I'm Professor Bandhubadhyay. I believe that your company, Sutherland, is an MNC. It is, yes. Uh, where is the head office? New York, upstate New York, Rochester. And where is the Indian uh, uh, head office? Uh, I can come and tell you on the way when I, I meet you personally. I mean, any questions for the audience? Generally? No, no. What, you, what I'm asking is what you have been narrating. Is it your regular operation or CSI initiative? A CSI uh, initiative. What we do regularly is ah. very much impactful in the way we do it. This is a regular operation. Then, but uh, I thought you'll be telling about your CSN initiatives, but what you're narrating is a regular business operation. Absolutely. Hmm. What I was just talking about is that the way we do our business is impactful. The way we do business all the time is always keeping in mind what we can do in terms of making a difference. And that, if you call CSR or otherwise, it's not about 2%. Hmm. It's about what we do is responsible, is inclusive, and is about making a difference. So you mean to say your entire business operation is CSR? Absolutely. I would say that. It's about making an impact. Any business has to be done for profit. But does it uh, fulfill your mandatory CSR requirement as per government of India initiative? It will definitely. Really? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you for